ಸಂಪದಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪೃಷ್ಠಾಯ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮೀತಿ ನಾಮಿನಿ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ದೇವಿ ಗೌರವಾನಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣಿ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯ ದೇಶ ತಾರಿಣಿ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧ ಶಿವಾಸಾದಿ ಶ್ರೀ ಗೌರ ಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೇತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧ ಶಿವಾಸಾದಿ ಗೌರ ಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧ್ರೀವಾಸಾದಿ ಗೌರ ಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ
Saturday afternoon satsang program. Thank you Raji Prabhu and Swamya Mataji for hosting today's program and inviting everybody at your home. So today we have Satish Prabhu speak first. <laughs> Satish Prabhu is going to speak. Come here. Satish Prabhu will be speaking on some very important topic. Hare Krishna. Come here. So, what topic are you speaking on? Mm -hmm. About commitment. About okay. commitment. Yes. Okay, so before we start our actual session, we'll have 10 minutes, stitch to or whatever time he takes 10 yeah. minutes, 15 minutes, or half an hour. <laughs> ಮಾತನಾಡುತ್ತಿದ್ದಾರೆ <laughs> please accept my ignorance so yeah like i have shot preparation for this so basically like a commitment um, uh, from myself like many everyone knows um, commitment the word so i also many times use i have already lot of commitments uh, missing some of the commitments and all that so uh, commitment uh, you know but sometimes we miss uh, all the commitment forms so basically like uh, we have a resolution and then uh, whenever we have a plan to implement something and achieve that one and to fulfill that uh, resolution if we fulfill that one yes we say like we committed and uh, we achieved that one and that's what like we give someone the commitment and based on that we create a resolution and try to achieve that 
sometimes we achieve those commitments and sometimes we may miss those commitments so basically like uh, why it is so difficult to miss those commitments uh, basically like uh, i looked into the charan uh, chaitanya charan prabhuji's lecture uh, one of the which is relevant to this topic so based on that only i made some notes basically like why it is a difficulty to miss the commitment so basically like we have a resolution but uh, the resolution is uh, is an example like uh, making a better health or being a better human being or improving our uh, human relationships or uh, any social uh, relationships and all that but sometimes we may not achieve then is a tendency the condition mind and all that what happens is we may feel like a give up attitude and in turn like because maybe it's not for me that commitment so the first question we should understand like uh, before giving up i think it's a question for myself as well as for everyone like are we giving up on all the commitments like uh, uh, commitments will be various kinds uh, but are we really giving up for this commitment or uh, are we giving up only few commitments that uh, we have to evaluate ourselves before giving up so that's the one thing then this uh, uh, commitments like uh, basically like i want to relate these commitments with one of the opinion of prabhuji's lecture related to the tripod like as the as you see that like multiple tripods here a tripod with the three legs each leg is important equally important so one is like a work balance work life uh, family life and the spiritual life so we should uh, how our commitments uh, cascade towards these three such that equally balanced that so that the tripod can withstand with the three legs So if we miss one of the legs, it's a, it's a great lesson uh, by Prabhuji or Prabhuji uh, about that the tripod and the rela- relative to the tripod to our life. So, uh, yes, if it's a difficulty to maintain the commitments, but we need to understand how the commitment works. Uh, basically, like if you make a resolution one time and then try to uh, evaluate that whether I reach the commitment or not, but. what we have to do is we have to repeatedly evaluate uh, our resolution like one time resolution will not work for us uh, for any uh, anyone to achieve the commitment so keep on uh, saying like uh, as an analogy or the example uh, whatever i learned is like a driving example like uh, whenever on the road if you are driving a car so we feel like we are driving on the proper lane but sometimes automatically it slightly swifts from the lane but we try to put it back on the lane so it's not mistake of the driver but mechanics of the car or the vehicle uh, so that mechanics implicitly causing slightly deviate initially we may put more effort to ensure but once we understand that vehicle vehicle mechanics and dynamics or how my vehicle works and all that seamlessly we will will control the steering and all the aspects such that without our much effort it goes in the smooth ride so same thing for the commitment also like initially we have to evaluate ourselves till we reach so that one and uh, repeatedly evaluate our resolutions towards the commitment so that's how like uh, to understand the commitment how it works the concept and uh, so how better we can do the commitment how we can fulfill our commitment uh, whatever i understood is like we have to recommit ourselves and that's what like uh, to fulfill the commitment recommit yourself by repeatedly following that and uh, yeah so it's like basically like repeatedly following is is purely related to the mind basically like why we distract from our commitment is mind will give us a lot of distractions and uh, prabhu ji many times explained like uh, senses and how the tata is uses uh, the senses like a limbs and uh, so we should adapt like that like whenever it is truly needed engage our senses in the day to day activities and all that based on the need so mm. that is the thing and one of the critical thing is the mind so mind di- distracts so don't expect like mind will not give the distractions but be prepare that yes mind gives the distractions but yet i am committed i i have to uh, fulfill my commitment so that's how like be prepare that mind always distracts uh but i am prepared to accept the distractions yet come back to the line where i can uh, fulfill my commitment so that's what you know uh, how we can um, achieve the commitments 
now like as i told like initially like the tripod analogy and basically like a commitments the various kinds right like uh, every time we need like a, at the work life uh, at the work as well as at the family life as well as at the spiritual life at three places how we can uh, plan and do the commitments um, example like uh, first if i take an example with the family life uh, everyone has the kids like uh, prabhu earlier explained like we have four different ashramas and we are uh, we are most of us i think everyone like, are in the grihastha ashram which is very important for other three ashramas to to run the brahmacharya ashram or vana prastha or the sanyasa ashram grihastha is very much important and we should understand like what and all do's and don'ts in the grihastha ashram and very specific whether it is our family or the relations so uh, again taking example from our prabhuji's lecture like how we should be with the family like attachment versus affection so attachment may lead to some kind of bias mistakes and all that but if you are affectionate show the affection and understand affection versus attachment and be affectionate to the relations and all that but not be too much attached uh, in that aspect so that's how and the other than that like a grihastha has its own like uh, apart from running the own family think about how how to serve others like a brahmacharis or other uh, to run the other ashramas what a grihastha should do it so that's what like whenever it comes to the family not only like a Uh, own blood relation or own family it's like uh, extended responsibilities as a grihastha is a single entity so that we should see and uh, that is the commitment uh, from the family life perspective as the grihastha ashram perspective and comes to the work life basically like uh, as i told like many including me also like finding the happiness from the work uh, or like uh, more because the work is as our assumption uh, or my assumption might be earlier it's like work drives all other things so i have to do the work because that is the bread and butter at many aspects yes uh, krishna sanctions some work and uh, here uh, i would like to uh, uh, the karma yoga like a text uh, 47 from the chapter 2 of the bhagavad gita like uh, uh, accept it's a sanctioned work the prabhu ji will explain many times like accept it is a sanction work by the krishna and then do it as a duty and not attached to the results as well as don't think like you are the only the person uh, or contributor towards the results or uh, final results so sorry if i mistaken but it is uh, repeatedly like a uh, bhagavad gita chapter 2 text 47 please read the transcript once and uh, try to follow that at the workplace like do it as a duty accept whatever the results don't attach to the results and don't think like you are the only the contributor towards the result so some other external forces of prem lord many other aspects come into the result so accept that fact and adapt that uh, to become like a karma yogi and towards like a nishkama karma and all that but it's like by practice and by adapting some of the things will come that's where the next third one like a spiritual life so whatever i said like uh, ideal grihastha life are like going to the karma yoga and karmi to the karma yoga and nishkama karma and all that uh, it's easy but like if you want to sustain and then follow and adapt that one the third uh, link back like, third leg like, is the spiritual life that is a much more important that drives reality based on my practical experience that drives remaining to actually because without that maybe you can go a certain distance or it fulfill the certain commitments but uh, in order to fulfill the commitments understand a real identity and real purpose of the life and where you will get a real happiness uh, what do you mean by happiness and all that factors that when you spend your time and equally consider much important as the spiritual is a third point third leg so then you can you can very well do the other things you know so the importance of the spiritual and the commitment for that like basically like as i told like identity and the purpose and yeah so once you understand the importance of the spiritual your attitude towards your work your uh, relationships everything will change because uh, you put uh, supreme lord at the krishna as the center and then everything like you think like it is a sanction to us and then we'll do it to the best and to make krishna happy so then once you think like you are the servant of the supreme lord and your commitment or your purpose is very clear then it's all like okay 
everything you are doing whether it is uh, it's a good uh, towards my progress or the my uh, am i reaching the real purpose or not so that's what like that kind of uh, enlightenment and clarity will come when you consider the spiritual uh, as another equal leg like, and important so that's what like we should have the commitment towards that the spirituality and in that like uh, many many ways like um, uh, reading or association and all that but uh, one of that is like guru like uh, uh, my father is a teacher so i love uh, uh, teachers uh, since since childhood i have that habit uh, finding the teacher in everyone but getting the right teacher right guru uh, makes lot of difference so uh, yeah so that's what like i met when rudranath prabhu ji like I understood real meaning of guru like who removes the darkness guru uh, sanskrit word full meaning like who removes the darkness uh, we should uh, we should uh, commit towards our guru to understand uh, and then even like one of the like message from the today's guru maharaj the day to day message like how we should be like uh, towards the guru like basically like when you when we approach the doctor basically for our mental uh, physical illness or anything with the transparently we share with the doctor because uh, we have a faith on doctor that he can cure the disease and then uh, we have a fear that the sickness may increase so similarly when we approach the guru also we should be with the open mind such that uh, guru also like uh, is a similar like doctor uh, it's like when you approach him guru in a obese uh, obese and order and ob- obediently and then with the full openness and all that uh, guru helps us to come out of the darkness and understand the real purpose of the life and all that so uh, we should have the commitment towards uh, a guru also in that way that openness and uh, uh, respect uh, towards the guru and uh, uh, though guru considers as a friend or something else but should have that respect like a guru and Uh, that kind of thing so that uh, that's what the commitment we should have and then we yeah, have from the guru maharaj uh, think uh, it all like how to achieve like these commitments and all that but guru maharaj in the chat in, the, in that message he mentioned uh, like uh, medicine will not work medicine and the diet is needed uh, mm. so which is what like a reading chanting and the service uh, so uh, uh, like here uh, uh, commitment towards guru means one is the shiksha guru definitely but other than that like when we uh, go to the temple and all that get an opportunity to meet many vaishnavas and all that when you do a small service also like uh, uh, that's what my personal experience like if you want to get the blessings you want to go further in all aspects and then grow much better you need blessings from pure vaishnavas and devotees and many gurus and senior uh, devotees so they give blessings and they will uh, a uh, give hand when you offer uh, when you do some service even do you do the small service nobody expects uh, many uh, other things like uh, i saw in my personal experience when i approach or interact with many senior vaishnavas nobody expects you are like a well dressed or well or lot of money contributions or nothing like if you do a small service uh, they give lot of blessings uh, they they give some positive attitude and positive positivity to us that helps really to uplift uh, and come from uh, and never many times they fallen but many times it helped like their blessings and their mercy so it is much important like uh, have the commitment uh, truthfulness towards the guru and uh, senior vaishnavas mm. mm. yeah. that's all thank thanks all hari krishna thank you bro hari krishna ram ram krishna as per टॉपिक who is the cause of our misery anybody has misery any yes. problems in life mm-hmm. so who is the cause of our misery okay lessons lessons from avanti brahmana so in shrimad bhagavatam there is a very beautiful story 
which talk about Avanti Brahmana. Avanti means the name of the city. Today is Ujjain. Okay, today we know that city as Ujjain. So that's so there was a Brahmana who lived in Avanti, and what he did out of that, what result he got, and what was his reflection on those results. Then what he did further. So very beautiful story. We're going to discuss that story today. Many lessons to learn from that. Okay, many lessons to learn from that. It will talk about commitment also. It will talk about the duty of grihastha also. It will talk about our different debts and uh, what should be the mindset in general. Okay, you guys are ready? Yes. You want to hear that? Yes. Sir. Okay. Om Ajnana Timirandhasya Jnana Anjana Shalakaya Chakshuran Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Mukam Karoti Vachalam Pangum Langhayate Giri Yat Kripata Maham Vande Shri Guru Dina Tarene Paramananda Madhavam Shri Chaitanyeshwaram Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishthaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschat Kiteshatarine Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shivas Adi Gauravakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram Rama Ram Hare 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 Krishna So in Srimad Bhagavatam there is a discussion between Lord Krishna and Uddhava Everybody knows Uddhava he is a friend of Krishna. He is a cousin of Krishna. And he looks very much like Krishna. From his very childhood, he has been with Krishna. He is very attached to Krishna, very dear devotee and a very dear friend of Krishna. So there is a discussion between Uddhava and Krishna when Krishna is about to wind up his Leela and go back to the spiritual world. At that time, Uddhava asked many questions. He wanted to have many discussions with Krishna. So I will not go into all the history, all the details. We will take one section of Krishna and Uddhava's discussion there. So Uddhava had asked many, many questions. And Krishna answers those questions. And at one place, Uddhava had asked this question. What is Titiksha? What is Dhriti? Okay, what is Titiksha and what is Dhriti? Titiksha means Sahanshilta. Okay, everybody understand that Hindi word Sahanshilta? Tolerance. And then Dhriti. Dhriti means patience. Dhairya. So what is the difference in tolerance and patience? Anybody? Sometimes we think both same word. It's synonyms. But what is the difference between tolerance and patience? Hmm? Extremity in tolerance is patience. When <laughs> tolerance ki ati ho jai to wo patience hai. <laughs> okay, not really. Anybody else? So, Lord Krishna explains here tolerance, titiksha. Titiksha is to handle the situation or the disturbances caused by external factors. So if somebody comes and chastise you, somebody comes and blaspheme on you, somebody come and insult you, at that time controlling your emotions, controlling your ang anger, agitation, that is titiksha, tolerance. So tolerance is to handle the external circumstances. Disturbances caused by external factors. And contrary to that, dhriti, dhairya, patience means controlling your internal urges. From within us, 
there is so much disturbance caused by our senses our mind <coughs> so controlling our urges that is called patience so that is the difference in titiksha and dhairya tolerance and patience is sometimes we say right be patient because coming to back to the commitment thing you made a commitment now to fulfill that commitment you have to work hard but we are not able to control our mind our agitation of the senses and you want to give up and we say be patient just be patient and continue you will get the result in due course of time be patient so being patient by yourself that is dhairya so krishna explained in very briefly at that point what is the difference in tiksha and dhairya but then further krishna goes in much more detail about tolerance against external calamities external situations how to tolerate to go to what extreme in tolerance so there krishna mentions even if somebody is neglected if somebody is insulted if somebody is ridiculed if somebody is envied by the bad men in this world all sort of people are there right people will come and for no reason they will yell at you even though you have done so much to them but they will fault finding in you oh you did this to me you did that to me you choked my progress this that so there are all sort of people they will come and blaspheme you insult you ridicule you envy you that is by words but then they can go up to physical extent also people may come beat up you tie up you like an animal spit on you urinate on you that kind of extreme situations also and krishna says in under all these situation one should try to tolerate one who desires the ultimate highest goal of life in spite of all these difficulties one should use his intelligence to keep himself safe on the spiritual platform this is extreme right extreme of tolerance somebody is verbally harassing you is one thing now somebody physically try to tor- torment you beat up you and spit on you you are trying to sit and eat your food somebody comes and spits on that somebody urinate on that that kind of extreme situation and krishna says tolerate that for those people who are very cautious about their spiritual upliftment their spiritual progress they should handle all these situations now this particular point is actually mentioned for those who are in renounced order of life okay as we know there are four varanas and four ashramas brahmachari grahastha vanprastha sanyasi then brahmana kshatriya vaishya shudra those are four ashram uh, varanas so this particular statement actually krishna is speaking from the sanyasi's point of view somebody who has renounced everything he is wandering he is has fully dependent himself on the supreme lord so for such person he should have that level of tolerance we may say okay it doesn't apply on me i am a grihastha and then in the scriptures there are again another many different instructions if somebody is a uh, aggressor towards you six type of aggressors can be they can be put under control what type of six type of aggressors are mentioned if somebody try to poison you somebody try to put your house on fire somebody try to uh physically harm you somebody try to steal away your property somebody try to kidnap somebody's wife under this situation one can react and try to protect himself but here krishna is saying even if somebody is trying to beat you up and all that you should still try to control so we should understand there is a difference in the instruction given to different category of people somebody in a sanyas order of life yes he should have that level of tolerance but we also should have a level of tolerance it's not that for every small thing you start to react so arjun uh, uddhava uddhava asked back when lord krishna said this level of tolerance uddhava said please explain how to understand this 
This is very difficult to understand. Even a very intelligent person, for him also, if this type of situations come, he is not able to control. Right? We get completely bewildered by this type of situation and we end up reacting. So Uddhava is saying even a very intelligent person, they are not able to control in such situations. Only somebody who has fully taken shelter of your lotus feet, who has fully taken shelter of devotional service, maybe are able to tolerate that extreme level of situation. So how does it practically apply? How to understand this level of tolerance? Say in Bhagavad Gita also Lord Krishna says, Matra sparshastu kaunteya shitoshna sukha dukhada agma apayano anitya stam titikshasva bharata. Titiksha. There also Krishna uses the word titiksha. Tolerate. So Lord Krishna also speak about tolerating there to Arjuna also. And here Krishna is speaking of about tolerance to Uddhava also. But the level of tolerance which he told Arjuna versus the level of tolerance he is teaching to Uddhava is different. Because Arjuna, Arjuna was a Kshatriya. He had a certain duty. His level of tolerance is different. For Uddhava, Krishna is teaching him to take sannyas. For him, the level of tolerance is different. See, for a Kshatriya, Kshatriya's duty is to protect others. Now if some danger comes, some harm comes and Kshatriya says, no, I should tolerate no matter if he try to wind me up or beat me up or something, I will just have to tolerate. I will not even do my duty of protecting others. So then that's not his duty. He has to react in that case to protect others. Right? If the cops, if there is some shooter there in the area, they are killing innocent people and the cops come, they say, no, no, we have to tolerate. Right? We cannot do anything in this situation. We have to tolerate. No, that's not their duty. Their duty is to curb those aggressors. Their duty is they are trying to harm others. They have to <clears throat> curb them. They have to control them. But for somebody who is in a sannyas order of life, who has completely given up everything, they need to develop that level of tolerance. So Krishna told Arjuna also, you tolerate. If some man up man comes, happiness, distress come, Femi, infemi come, one should learn to tolerate. And then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also teaches him his instructions. Tarorapi Sahishnuna Amanina Manadena Kirtanya Sadahari Trinadapi Shunichena Taror Avi Api Taror Eva Sahishnuna Amanina Manadena Kirtanya Sadahari if somebody want to progress in spiritual life, one should develop this quality of tolerance. One should be humble like a blade of grass. If we walk on grass, grass doesn't retaliate. We put step on him. So it's like you are hitting on his head. He still doesn't retaliate. So that's humility. And then, Taror Eva Sahishnona. Sahishnona means tolerance. Like a tree, one should be tolerant. Tree is standing in either it's snow or heat, extreme heat. A tree is just standing like that. Tree is giving all his fruits also, flowers also. Somebody may pluck, take a stone and throw on the tree to get the flowers or the fruit. Still, tree does not retaliate. He just gives. So somebody should be like a blade of grass, like the tree, he should have that level of humility and tolerance. And in that state, without expecting honor for himself, but giving honor to others, if somebody develops that quality, then one can very easily chant the holy name. Otherwise, chanting the holy name is very difficult. Our mind will be always reminding us, oh, this person insulted you, that person insulted you, this person harmed you in that way, that person did that nasty thing to you. So we cannot progress in spiritual life if we have that much of ego, self-centeredness. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also teaches in that story. So Uddhava's question was, this level of tolerance, extreme level of tolerance is very difficult. Even an intelligent person, he cannot control in that way. And then Lord Krishna said, yes, you are right. Virtually, nobody can tolerate that level of extreme situations. But somebody, if they can, 
they are great. For them, the spiritual path becomes very easy. And then Lord Krishna starts telling about this Avanti Brahmana. I will tell you one story of an Avanti Brahmana. Even though he was ridiculed, he was insulted, he was criticized, he was beaten up, he was tied up, he was pat on his head, his, he, he was urinated upon. Still, he tolerated all this situation, considering everything to be the result of his own previous karma. And he tolerated all these situations. So I will tell you the story of that Avanti Brahmana. Okay, so this is from where the story starts. That was the background so far. So Lord Krishna tells now, in the city of Avanti, there lived a Brahmana. That Brahmana, he was engaged, even though he was a Brahmana, Brahmana's job is what? What are the duties of a Brahmana? To give knowledge to others. Yajan Jajan, Patan Patan. So, to study and to teach, to do Yajyas. So, that is the type of duties of a Brahmana. So, yes, this person, he was born in a Brahmana family, but he was engaged in the occupation of agriculture and trading. Like he was doing the duty of a Vaishya. Born in a Brahmana family, but actually he was engaged in the occupation of agriculture and trading. And he has acquired a lot of wealth. Even though he had acquired a lot of wealth, but what was his nature? His nature, he was Kadriyas, means miserly. He was very miserly, Kanjus. He was Kami, very lusty. Lubdho, he was very greedy. Ati Kopana, he was very easily angered, short-tempered. Sound something similar to us? Some of these qualities? <laughs> Opposite to Brahmana. Huh? Opposite to Brahmana. Opposite to Brahmana. But does these qualities sound something which we can reflect in ourselves also? Yeah. So he was miserly, he was lusty, he was greedy, he was very short tempered. Ill mannered basically. He was very easily angered, he was very ill speaking to others. That was his behavior. So Lord Krishna originally he said when when Uddhava said right that this is too much of tolerance that somebody if somebody try to harm physically it's very difficult. So Lord Krishna says actually the harsh words of somebody are more injurious they cause more danger or more harm. So if somebody physically hit you they will hurt you once. But somebody, if they speak bad words to you, they are shooting the arrows of their bad words on you. Those sharp words, they penetrate through your heart. They harm more. Physically, somebody hurt, that is once. It will fill up. Those wounds will fill up soon. But the wounds caused in the deep of your heart, caused by somebody's bad words, they will be keep coming again and again in your memory. Oh, that person said this to me. He spoke like this to me. So those will be hurting you again and again. So the harsh words, the arrows of harsh words, they are even more harmful. So this person, he is short-tempered. He is ill-speaking to others. Even if any guests come at his home, the least thing we can do to the guest is if you cannot offer him some place to sit, if you cannot offer him something to eat, you can't offer him some water to drink. The least thing you can do is offer some sweet words. Right? Speak nicely to that person. Greet him nicely. But this person, he will not even speak nicely to anybody who comes at his home. Like if someone comes to his home, he will fall the dog. So he will just speak so badly to those people. He will think, oh, somebody has come, he has come to take some money from me. Abhi aaya hai, toh kuch paisa maangega. So, with that intention, he will never speak properly, never speak nicely to anybody. So, Kanjus, he was very miserly. What is the meaning of miserly? Who can be considered as a miserly? Uh, who have a knowledge, but they, they cannot utilize the Anything. Yes. But whatever we have, we cannot utilize. Whatever we have, we cannot utilize. That is miserly. 
so it can be one term one meaning could be in terms of not using our money right somebody has money they don't use their money they just live like a beggar <laughs> very torn like simple basic clothes not proper to eat also they just live a very menial life even though they have everything just tie up everything in the locker to jori mein sab sambhal ke rakhenge don't utilize for themselves also don't give to anybody else also miserly that is in terms of wealth somebody has lot of intelligence but they don't utilize their intelligence to understand what is the purpose of life that is also miser so that's why in bhagavad gita lord krishna says anybody who has got human form of life but we are not utilizing our human form of life to understand the real purpose of this life that person is a miser because we are human the difference in human and animal is the higher intelligence but if we are not utilizing our higher intelligence but just going over this basic necessities of life eating sleeping mating defending animals also do that animals also eat they also sleep they also produce children they also try to protect themselves so if human is also just doing same basic thing there is no difference he is not utilizing his higher higher intelligence purpose of human life is athato brahma jigyasa inquire who am i what is the purpose of my life what is the goal of my life so then that person is really a human being otherwise he is miser and then somebody has physical strength they are not utilizing their physical strength somebody is a kshatriya their job is to protect others but if they are not doing their duty he is also miser so in that various way somebody could be miser so we should not think somebody only not utilizing his wealth is a miser we also in some way fall in the category of a miser so he was miser he was easily angered not even speak properly to the guest he will not welcome the guest with sweet words and he will not spend enough on himself also he will not take care of himself also properly if if let's say if the wife says today we are making rice with rice let's make sambar uh, he will say what is the need of sambar just put some pilyogiri paste in that what is the need of sambar wife says let's make some nice sabji today what is the need of sabji just make some basic dal chawal that's enough so he will not try to satisfy himself also he will not take care of himself also properly so he was so hard hearted and miserly that his sons his daughters his in-laws his wife his servants they all begin to feel they all try, became inimical towards that person see if such person is in your life he is ill speaking he doesn't give you anything if somebody like that in our family member or in our extended family somebody like that is there what will be your behavior toward that person avoid association run away from that person so avoid that person give up that person so all his family members his servants his wife children in laws everybody they became inimical towards him this person is useless so they were not treating him with affection now even though he had all this wealth he was just protecting his wealth like a chaukidar you know chaukidar security person outside see the security person outside the building he is just guarding that building he doesn't own the building and he yet doesn't utilize he doesn't enjoy that building he is just being a gatekeeper security person so same way if somebody has lot of wealth he just puts all his wealth in the tijori and just guarding it protecting it he is like a chaukidar he is not utilizing his wealth he is not enjoying his wealth he is just guarding it so this person was also just like a chaukidar the word used here is yaksha so yakshas yakshas are the associates of kubera kubera is the in charge of treasury of the demigods so he has lot of wealth and then he has lot of associates who are called yakshas they are the protector of that treasury they just guard that treasury so this person is also compared like a yaksha he has lot of wealth but he is not utilizing 
and then what happened in due course of time because he was not doing any dharma he was not spending his money for any purpose of religiosity he was not spending any money for his personal sense enjoyment also kama so dharma kama vihinasya there was no religiosity in his life there was no enjoyment in his life so in absence of all that what he was doing was just collecting 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 sangraha the word used here is sangraha sangraha means you just keep collecting so for grahasthas yes it is okay to do some collection okay we can save some for our future for our future needs for your children's education and what not so to some extent it's okay to do some collection some sangraha but one should not try to over collect and specially for brahmacharis for vanaprasthas for sanyasis there is no provision of collection at all like they should not collect at all so for the sanyasis or the brahmacharis there is no bank account in in our movement there are so many sanyasi there are so many brahmacharis there is no bank account it's not that they are taking some charity and putting into their bank account no so they are not supposed to have any collection whatever comes it it could be the bank account on the name of a trust whatever is coming is being utilized for some purpose right for the for feeding to the other people to giving charity in some other projects and all this person even though yes he was a grahastha as a grahastha we have a provision to save something but he was over collecting not utilizing for any purpose and five type of people became upset with him so keep reflecting okay when you hear this story keep reflecting on it what is the real essence real meaning behind that so five type of people became upset with him what are these five type of people because as human being we are supposed to do five type of yagya or as in manusmriti it is said that we have five types of debt we have debt towards five category of people so that is panch yagya what are these five type of debt we have debt towards rishi the saintly people who have given us the shastras the knowledge the teachings because we take those teachings and based on that we live our life so that is we have debt towards the sages rishis that's why we are supposed to perform rishi yagya means paying our debt towards those sages serving the sages how we can serve the sages one is physically serving them another way of serving the sages is spreading their teachings to others right that is how you serve your guru guru upasana acharya upasana the best thing we can do is we help them in their work so rishi then dev that is called a deva yagya dev means we are getting so much of the things from the demigods we are getting air we are getting light we are getting water all these basic necessities of life it's all coming from the demigods who are the controller of various necessities of life and it is our duty to pay back our debt towards the devatas so for that purpose we are supposed to do deva yagya paying our debt towards the devatas then the third thing is bhutas bhutas means not ghost okay bhuta bhuta means living entities so other living entities other living entities in the sense now when we do any farming okay if you grow any vegetables in the ground also there are so many insects there there are so many earthworms there those earthworms are also helping so much in the growth of those crops right if they are not doing their work we will not get any crop then there are so many other insects in the sense of bumblebee insects in the sense of the the ones which are going on the flowers because of them the flowers grow actually pollinating right so that is there hari krish so first one was rishi yagya second one was deva yagya third one is bhut yagya serving the other living entities like feeding to the animals right giving giving some water or some grains to the birds 
that is also in one way one type of yajna paying our debt towards the other living entities then fourth one fourth one is manushya yajna manushya yajna means other human beings other living entities means the other creatures manushya means other human beings as part of the society because we are living in a society and we are getting so much from everybody somebody is doing one particular type of work and we are receiving those those goods somebody is doing farming we are getting the crops and agriculture um, the fruits and flowers and vegetables somebody is doing protecting the cows keeping the cows we are getting milk so from everybody we are getting something from all the society everybody is contributing in the society so our responsibility towards the society and then the fifth one is fifth one fifth one is pitru yagya pitru yagya means get towards our family members our elders our parents grandparents because of whom we have got this human form we have got this body so our debt towards our own relatives family members ancestors so these are the five type of debt a human being is supposed to pay so as a human being we are supposed to serve these all different category of people if we are not doing paying those debts if we are not fulfilling our responsibility towards them then we are called miser miser or a thief also right if if somebody is earning lot of income they don't pay their taxes what are they called tax thief right unhone tax ka chori kiya hai so same way we are getting from everybody if we are not paying our debt towards them we are also called a thief in that way and this brahmana whose qualities we described he was not fulfilling his responsibility so these five category of people five type of people became upset with him see if if somebody becomes a devotee of the lord then naturally he is very careful towards everybody and in that way he is not indebted to anybody if somebody is serving the supreme lord indirectly he is serving everybody he has taken care of all the debts he doesn't have to individually do anything for anybody because he is serving the supreme lord and as we water the roots of the tree the whole tree gets nourished in that way when we serve the supreme lord everybody else becomes satisfied so he has paid off all the debt towards everybody so this brahmana he was not a devotee he was not serving anybody else he was just collecting 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 being miserly so this five category of people became upset with him and because of his neglect of everybody neglect of his duty towards the demigods duty towards the family members he lost all stock of his piety okay so he lost all stock of his piety even though he was very determined in collecting money but he was not spending anything at all in due course of time he lost everything reflection for us see it's good we want to earn but at the same time we should be utilizing that wealth for various different purposes not just for our self centered agenda thinking me and mine and spending on that we need to take care of many other aspects in our life if somebody is not doing that in due course of time they are exhausting their stock of piety so he lost all his wealth how because he was not doing anything for the demigods demigods became very angry at him he got natural <coughs> troubles natural disturbance in the sense there was drought and his whole crop was losted he lost all his crop there was a fire in his go down he lost everything so because of natural disturbances or one say because demigods became upset with him some portion was taken away there was a theft in his house the thieves took some portion his family members because he was not giving anything to anybody family members took some part secretly or something right they will if you don't give to somebody based on their need also they will try to take themselves so natural disturbances then his 
थेफ्ट एट होम हिज फैमिली मेंबर्स और सर्वेंट्स टू कवे समथिंग एंड देन द गवर्नमेंट ऑफिशियल्स टू कवे समथिंग इन फॉर्म ऑफ टैक्सेस इफ यू हैव लॉट ऑफ मनी विच यू आर हाइडिंग somebody complains to the government officials income tax department but this person is having lot of money he is not paying his taxes you should raid his home so like that somebody complained about him because they were so much upset with this person they were so much angry at this person so they complained about him to the government officials like the king and there was a raid at his home they took some portion away so in these all these various way he lost all his wealth and he lost all his piety also and see after that when he lost everything then what did he do then what kind of reflections he had that is more important so this is his first previous life previous life in this is earlier part of his life when he was so miserly and he was with all these bad behavior and bad habits and bad manners so what from this part of his life what we can learn let's talk about that first what we can learn from his this initial part of life he was very miserly he was trying to collect 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 in that way if we see in our life if we are trying to collect if we have left our hometown home country we have come to a different country we are trying to collect money we are trying to earn money in dollars or something and then we want to convert those dollars into rupees or rupees into dollars but ultimately if we are going to the higher planets this currency will not be useful right this rupees or dollars will not be useful for that there is a different level of currency what kind what kind of currency is needed for that punya that is your punya that's your pai sukriti so one need to convert not rupees to dollars or dollars to rupees but one need to convert into the real piety real that kind of currency also then only we are fulfilling some purpose otherwise you are going to lose everything and then we need to partake of our wealth in serving others now i will tell you one story a side story not related to this avanti brahmana but another story which demonstrate a very beautiful point once there was a beggar on the street he very rotten clothes he has not eaten anything for days very miserable condition so there was a beggar on the street sitting there and one very rich person came there so this rich person saw this beggar and he asked this beggar why are you in this situation what do you want he said if you give me something to eat some little money so i can get some food i will be very happy i will be very thankful to you and this rich person said i am not going to give you anything i am not going to give you any money or any food but i will do one thing i want to make you my business partner okay, so he said i am going to make you my business partner and this poor person this beggar became very happy you want to make me your business partner you are god for me you are going to do so much favor on me so what is the deal will you keep 90% of the profit and give me 10% of the profit and this rich person said no actually you keep 90% and give me only 10% this person is even more surprised now you are making me business partner telling me you keep 90% and just give 10% so this rich person said yes that is the business deal and i have a rice plant rice go down so you distribute that rice and whatever profit you get you keep 90% and just give 10% to me so this person became very happy he started he worked very hard he sold many lot of rice and got lot of money now this was the time end of the month 31st march he has to pay the 10% share to the businessman who made him the business partner so this businessman came to take his share of 10% but now what happened to this person he started thinking see this person is not doing anything i am doing all the hard work 
I am going and doing such hard work and distributing all this rice and making all this money. So his expenses are met, but whatever profit I am getting, that's all mine. It's all my hard work because of which the profit is coming. So why should I share even 10% with him? So when this rich person came, okay, now give me my 10% share. This person said, get lost. What 10%? Actually, this is all my hard work. You don't deserve even 10%. So you know what is this rich person and what is this beggar? Who is this rich person and who is this beggar? Beggar is us. Beggar, we are the beggar. And uh, rich person is God. God is the rich person. See, we are the beggar. We don't have anything on our own. Everything we are getting from God. So God said, okay, yes, I give you the ability. You do your work. You work hard. But it, just give 10% of yours to me. We are supposed to give at least 10% to the God. All the scripture says we should contribute 10% of our income in service of the Lord. And 10% of our time with Lord. Both factors, okay? Remember two things. 10% of our time for Lord. 10% of our income in service of the Lord. If we don't do that, then our nature is like that beggar who tell at the end of the day, oh, ultimately this is all my hard work. Why should I give my income to you? Even 10% share. So God has given us 24 hours, giving two hours to the Lord, spending two hours with the Lord. Engaging in spiritual life. Because that is how you convert your dollars into spiritual piety. In that currency. And then 10% of our income in service of God. Contributing as a charity. Charity in service of Lord. Charity for helping others. One may say, okay, I have too many expenses. Paying the rent of the house, mortgage of the house or bills or kids education and all that there is nothing left for me only little bit left and I have to save for the future but remember the story of Avanti Brahmana if we are just thinking for ourselves and collecting in that way ultimately nothing is going to stay with us it's going to be lost but if we utilize now in service of God it's going to come back many fold and we do not understand that part actually if we utilize little bit in service of Lord, it's going to come multifold back. Who is giving us the ability to work? Who is giving us the intelligence to work? So one should remember this principle, 10%. 10% of our time, 10% of our earnings in service of Lord. Okay, if we cannot start with 10%, start somewhere. Start with 1%. Somewhere we should start. You cannot give 10% of your time on an everyday basis. Give 10% in a whole week. 10% of day's time in a whole week. Two hours. Come for the program for two hours. Attend the program. Attend the class. Attend the kirtan. Come two hours for temple program. So that will help you to build up that spiritual bank balance. Otherwise, if we keep saying, I don't have time, I don't have time, I don't have time, I'm too busy with my life, I have too many responsibilities. Krishna says, Tathastu. You stay busy like that. And in that way, you stay miserable like that. So, Avanti Brahmana had this initial part of his life where he was collecting, 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 ultimately he lost everything. Now, what happened next? That's also very important. You want me to complete this today? Yes. Okay, let's see if we can finish. I have to maybe rush it a little bit to give you the crux of the whole story. So this Avanti Brahmana, when he finally lost everything, when there is no wealth left, his family members started treating him even more worse. This person is good for nothing. They started giving him all sort of... Um, what do you call Tane Marna? It taunts. See, earlier I told you on Diwali, give me some nice sari. You did not give me that. Now everything is lost. 
<laughs> I told you, let's go to the restaurant, eat some nice food, and you did, did not take me. See, now everything is lost. So they started giving him all sort of taunts, and they started treating him even worse. So he left the home. He left everything. He left the home, or they kicked him out. That this is what you did with us. Now you get out of this house. So he left the house. and he started reflecting on his situation what happened what a great misfortune aho kashtam aho kashtam what a great misfortune i tormented myself to earn so much money i worked hard to earn so much money but then i have lost everything i did not use it for any religiosity or any sense enjoyment also na dharmaya na kamaya never i did any religious activity never i cared for myself also properly but i was tormenting myself so much in working so hard to collect 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 earn that money but alas now i have lost everything now he was reflecting see earning this money in earning the money in trying to increase the money in trying to spend the money in trying to enjoy the money and ultimately if the money is lost in all these situations there is so much of hard work there is so much of fear there is so much of anxiety and then there is so much of illusion will you remember these things five things he mentioned about money what are these five things uh, earning money spend. trying to expand increase money spend trying to spend money trying to enjoy with money and ultimately trying to or if the money is lost five things can happen and in those five things there is so much of labor there is so much of fear there is so much of anxiety and there is so much of illusion so labor bhay chinta and bhram in earning money does it take hard work or no yes take a lot of hard work right mm. <laughs> and when you earn money then you have fear about losing money more there is so much fear of losing money there fear maybe thieves can come and steal my money <laughs> or the income tax department will take my money so there is so much of fear or what if some relatives come and they ask for some money mm. <laughs> if somebody come at my home and ask for some loan and they will never give me back <laughs> so there is earning in earning there is so much labor then there is so much fear of losing mm. and people are having so much of worry about expanding their money there is so much of bhrama illusion confusion in while they want to expand their money invest money somewhere they want to invest in the stocks or some bonds or open some other enterprise business or something they want where to keep money so that it will grow more there is so much confusion in that right so so much illusion also in that and then spending the money spending money in the sense buying the things that also very painful wife want to buy the best food item best quality husband say why to get best quality get the great value khana hi hai ये वाला बटर क्यों ये वाला बटर क्यों नहीं भाई वाई टू वाई यू वॉन्ट कैरी गोल्ड बटर वाई नॉट द क्रोगर ब्रांड बटर सो इन स्पेंडिंग द मनी ऑल्सो देर इज सो मच ऑफ दिस चिंता दिस वरी एंगजाइटी एंड देन इन ज्वाइंग इन इन ज्वाइंग द मनी ऑल्सो देर इज सो मच ऑफ वरी इन एंगजाइटी समबड़ी वॉन्ट टू गो ऑन अ टूरिस्ट प्लेस एंड चिंता इज हाउ मच मनी विल बी स्पेंड when you want to stay in a hotel somewhere you are going on somewhere should i stay in a motel 8 or some other marriott, marriott hotel <laughs> so there is so much of these considerations should i buy this iphone or the basic phone so it's not about what you want to buy it's based on the need if you need something then buy it why to look at the price tag then if you really need that thing right but the point is in earning money in trying to expand the money in spending the money in enjoying the money and 
to protect that money fear of losing that money so there is all these various factors are there so this brahmana is thinking now i troubled myself so much and because of this when somebody has the wealth it brings 15 bad qualities yeah i'm not saying bhagavatam is saying it brings 15 bad qualities parikshit maharaj also wanted to punish kali kali said give me one more place to stay then parikshit maharaj said you can stay where there is excessive gold where there is excessive wealth kala dhan hai jahan par kali can stay there means kali yug's residence there means all bad qualities so if somebody has excessive wealth it brings 15 bad qualities what are those steyam hinsa anartam means falsehood dambha duplicity kama lust krodh anger perplexity madha means pride then bhed means quarreling with others then vairam enmity avishwas faithlessness in others somebody will take away my money i don't trust this person so faithlessness avishwas then samsprada competition envy towards others and then uh, the engagement in illicit relation gambling intoxication these are the five 15 bad qualities which arise because of somebody having excessive wealth somebody is trying to collect 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 because if somebody has some wealth somewhere he will try to spend and he will develop all these other bad qualities also so this brahmana is reflecting i spent so much time earning this money now i lost everything actually even one's brother one's wife one's parents one's friend one's children who have such a intimate relationship with somebody because of wealth even these relationship affectionate relationship they are also turned into enmity anybody has experience see our own close family members with whom we have affectionate relationship because of money there could be disturbance in relationships one brother is earning lot of money another is does not have they get enmity towards each other they get envy towards each other one person want to take over the property of their parents and want to suppress the other person so in that way even the affectionate relationships get disturbed pap bada na bhaiya sabse bada rupaiya right money is sweeter than honey there are so many such statements like that money is sweeter than honey so all these relationships get destroyed over a property the property matters see if you go in india there are so many court cases and more than 50% of the court cases are because of property brothers have quarreling between each other even son has put a court case against father property and it's coming from the time of ramayan also we see ke kai wanted to make his her son bharat as a king so there was also property matter and because of that she plotted everything to send ram to exile so affectionate relationships can get disturbed she has such an affection for ram treated ram as more dear to her own son bharat but then when her mind was polluted her consciousness was polluted she wanted to send ram to exile for 40, 14 years so money can destroy all the affectionate relationships so money actually see when we are talking about this money you understand one thing we are not talking bad about money money in itself is not bad attachment with money is the problem okay we are not saying stop working don't go to your job don't earn money money is not problem earning money is not problem but attachment with that money is the problem and then so he started reflecting that actually somebody has got a human form of life and more so over somebody has got a brahmana life somebody has got that brahmana culture brahmana intelligence if somebody does not utilize that life he is losing that opportunity he is killing his own self interest 
and ultimately he becomes the most unfortunate person so he is criticizing himself that i took birth as a human i took birth as a brahmana but i did not utilize that higher values of life and then one who fails to distribute his wealth to the proper shareholders like the demigods the sages the forefathers the other living entities and one's own family members he is maintaining his own wealth simply like a yaksha simply like a chaukidar as a gatekeeper security person he is not utilizing he is not giving to anybody also so he started reflecting now he is not worrying he understand one point he is not worrying now that oh i lost everything what will happen now he is not worrying but in that situation he started to reflect back reflecting means worrying is based on ignorance okay worry is based on ignorance reflection is based on intelligence reflection is based on knowledge when somebody has that higher knowledge then we reflect it's not about reading the books it's about studying the books somebody may say oh i have read bhagavad gita i have read bhagavatam i have read many other motivational books rich dad poor dad and what not so it's not about reading all these books it's about what you have gained from that and what you have applied in your life yes yeah, so it's about studying those doing manan on those reflecting on those and putting that in practice what you have applied in your life so stish prabhu spoke about commitments okay yeah, we need to understand whatever commitments are where my commitments are are my commitment to the right object or to the wrong object we may say one thing but we do another thing we say i have commitment towards this thing or this particular thing but then we do behavior in opposite way so this brahmana started reflecting now and what did he do after that so he was thinking if somebody is on the verge of death and a lot of wealth is offered to that person what is the use of such wealth if somebody is on the verge of death if you are in a hospital lying on a ventilator and somebody tells you you got a million dollar lottery what is the use of that wealth you cannot enjoy anything you cannot go anywhere so if somebody is going to be hanged to death and at that person somebody offers him lot of nice food or lot of wealth what is the use of such wealth so any type of fruity activity which simply causes one to again take birth in material world that is useless and then he started thinking actually the lord is very kind to me he have done such a big favor on me he has taken away everything and has given me such nice reflections such <coughs> nice realizations see if it was an ordinary person when all these sort of things have happened he will maybe commit suicide he will be under so much depression i worked 30 years in america no green card now they are kicking me out of country <laughs> i have to go back what is the use of life let me commit suicide <laughs> so somebody loses everything that person will be so much depressed but this person one good thing he did was when this situation came in his life he was reflecting back and he thanked the lord actually it is the special mercy of the lord vishesh kripa anugraha that is the special mercy of the lord that i have got these realizations okay. now for us you don't want to get that type of special mercy of the lord <laughs> anybody want to get that type of special mercy of the lord to come to that understanding that where i should spend my time where should i invest in or spend my money or how i should be living my life we don't want to get that type of special mercy of the lord that where you are bereft of everything better we understand what is the purpose of human life and we start taking to that process seriously from now onwards rather than waiting for the lord to kick us in the back first because that is also lord special mercy okay see one difference is 
when we were in India, okay, th that's a reality. That's based on survey also. When we are in India, we don't give too much value to our culture, our heritage. Because it seems to be just part of life. We see it all around so much. We don't give it value. But when we come to America, here we give some importance to our culture. We give some importance to those practices, spiritual or religious practices. Because the reason is, when we are in India, we are too much connected with that. We don't give it value. But when we get disconnected from that, then you feel that separation and the importance of that thing. Right? Like the blood. Blood in the body is there. In normal way, you don't even feel, you don't give any care to that. Okay, blood in the body, it's flowing. But when you get the cut on your finger or in some part of your body, when the blood is flowing out, then you have concern. Then you think about that blood. Oh my God, there's so much blood is coming out. Then you become so much concerned about that. So same way, when we get disconnected from our roots, our culture, then we become little concerned, little serious about that. Oh, we want to give values to our children. We want to give those that culture to our children. But still, still we are taking it more from the cultural point of view, not from spiritual point of view. We think this chanting, coming to this some satsang program sometime once in a while, oh, that's part of culture. So maybe it feels good. Some Once in a while I should do that. So don't limit it to the culture point of view. Understand the spiritual importance point of view of that. In our day-to-day -day life, what is the importance of practicing this? So this Brahmana started reflecting all this. This special mercy of the Lord, He has taken away everything and He has given me such nice realization. Now, I want to fulfill the ultimate goal of my life. I don't know how much time is left in my life. But I want to take seriously to the spiritual practice. Even if I were to die next moment, for that one next moment, I want to fully take shelter of the Supreme Lord. Like Maharaj Khatvanga. Maharaj Khatvanga, he was invited by the demigods to fight against the demons. And when that war was over, demigods told Khatvanga Maharaj, we are very happy with you, we are very pleased with you. Ask us any boon. We will give you anything. But Khatvanga Maharaj, you know, what did he ask? He said, first tell me how much time is left in my life. And the demigods told, sorry, you have only one muhurata left. One muhurata worth time left in your life. What is one muhurata? It's about duration of 40 minutes. Okay. Bolte re, shadi ka muhurat nikla ja hai. So that is the muhurat, like 40 minutes or some duration where that particular, particular ritual need to be done. So, Katavanga Maharaj had one muhuratha worth of time left in his life. He said, I don't want anything. In this one muhuratha, I want to surrender to the Supreme Lord and completely absorb my consciousness in the Supreme Lord. And he got the ultimate benefit. He went back to the Supreme Lord. This Brahmana thought, now I don't know how much time is left in my life, but I want to fully surrender to the Lord. So, he gave up everything with torn, ragged cloths, just with a bowl to beg with chanting mala in his hands he started wandering all around going from town to town city to city wandering without dependence on anybody if somebody will give him any food he will accept it and in that way he started wandering he completely took sannyas and when he took sannyas when he is just wandering like that forest uh, village to village city to city there were many bad people, rowdy type of people who tortured him, who harassed him. They will come and sometimes beat him up. Sometimes bind him up like an animal. Sometimes they will, he is, whatever little bagging he got, he is sitting at one place to eat. They will come and urinate on his food. They will spit on his head. He will speak so bad words to him. They will sometimes mock him, sometimes criticize him. Oh, sometimes somebody will recognize him. I know this person. He was such and such Brahmana living in Avanti. He was such a miserly person. Now he has lost everything. All his family members have threw him out of the home. Now he is just pretending to become a spiritualist. 
so they will criticize him they will mock him but he did not mind anything he did not think i am being troubled because of others he thought this is all my previous karma which is coming which is giving me the result and what did he say who is the cause of our misery so he at that point he sang a song he recited set of verses which is known as bhikshu gita okay that is part of uddhav gita inside uddhav gita there is a certain set of verses about 17 18 verses which are spoken by this brahmana reflecting on what is the real cause of our misery that is called bhikshu gita and the first verse of that bhikshu gita is actually given as a sanyas mantra when somebody takes sanyas they tell him this mantra which he is, has to recite every day like when we get a brahman uh, brahman initiation we get gayatri mantra the so same way when somebody takes sanyas they take sanyas mantra which is this verse spoken by this bhikshu this avanti brahmana after he completely transformed so this bhikshu this dvija uvacha न अयम जनो मे सुख दुख हेतु न देवात्मा ग्रह कर्म काल मन परम कारण अमानी संसार चक्र पिवर्त्येदयत वी ब्लेम सो मेनी अदर पीपल सो मेनी अदर थिंग्स द कॉज ऑफ अवर मिजरी होम डू वी ब्लेम फॉर द कॉज ऑफ अवर मिजरी so we'll finish try to finish i cannot go in detail i will just summarize here up to this point and maybe we'll discuss further in the next time uh, in detail but generally we blame so many other things for our misery the first factor <coughs> whom we blame is other people oh they are the cause of my misery it could be our neighbor it could be our own family member Sometime we may blame our parents also. Sometime we may blame our spouse also. जब से तुम्हारे साथ शादी हुआ है मेरे तो भाग फूट गए. It's since I got married with you, I have got all these problems in my life. Since this child came to my life, it is all misery for me. So we blame people. Second thing we blame is God. देवता gods. They are not giving me. they are not supplying my needs they are not fulfilling my desires so we blame even to god ye bhagwan ne kya kar diya what did god do why god is giving so much misery so we blame god damn you gods the third thing we blame is our own body my body is causing me so much pain my body body is not cooperating with me so we blame our own body then we blame society society that's people that's first thing done right society it is anything it could be the external people outside within the family or our our boss also anything people so the fourth factor is people blame the graha the planets graha nakshatra मेरे ऊपर शनि चढ़ा है अभी मेरी शनि की दशा ठीक नहीं है साढ़े सात सात साल ही लगी है साढ़े सात लगी है राइट पीपल से माई शनि दशा इज नॉट राइट मेरी बुद्ध दशा ठीक नहीं है या मेरी मंगल दशा ठीक नहीं है सो पीपल गो टू एस्ट्रोलॉजर्स एंड दे ट्राई टू फाइंड द रेमेडी पीपल थिंक इट्स द इन्फ्लुएंस ऑफ डिफरेंट प्लानिट्स विच इज कॉजिंग मी प्रॉब्लम एंड देन अवर ओन कर्मा after these four ultimately we come this is because of me only it's my own karma which is causing me problem i have done something bad in my previous life and that is what the cause of my suffering now it's bringing me suffering and the sixth factor is kal time mera to samay kharab chal raha hai we blame time jab mera samay aayega tab main dikhaunga every dog has their day <laughs> every dog has its day right sometimes people claim say this type of statement so people give these six blames or they blame these six category of things other people hmm. even the devatas body. our own body karma the grah nakshatra karma, karma. and time. time see even time 
karma and time yes they are the real factor based on time everything will change har din hota na ek saman our time will change because of our previous some activity some result is going to come that is real even in mahabharata bhishma pitama he told the pandavas that it is the influence of time only that you had to suffer all these different troubles ye kal chakra hi aisa hai so yes time is there but the biggest factor this brahmana avanti brahmana based on his realization his reflection he is telling who is the cause of our problem sometimes we say right who is the cause it's not who is the cause what is the cause of our problem manah parmam karanam amananti sansara chakram parivartiye dayat it is the mind alone that causes happiness and distress and perpetuates the rotation of material life it's our own mind actually which is the cause of all the problems it's not that people are troubling us mm. our mind is the one who is troubling us oh somebody said you this thing somebody said you that thing somebody did this to you our mind is troubling us so our mind is the cause of problem he said because mind he is influenced by the three modes of material nature goodness passion ignorance and because of the influence of these three mode it brings up many different samskaras and based on that then one engages in various sort of activity we have the influence of passion ignorance and goodness somebody claims they are 100% in goodness anybody anybody here claims they are 100% in goodness actually there is 90% ignorance in ordinary people in general people maybe 5 7% some passion and then goodness is negligence 1% 2% so we need to increase our level of goodness we need to develop this goodness more and more removing the influence of passion and ignorance and because of the influence of passion and ignorance somebody commits same type of action somebody is in ignorance he will do that type of ignorant action somebody is in passion he will do some passionate action somebody want to earn a lot of money he want to earn some big position big fame in the society so under passion he will do that type of activity and if somebody is in the mode of goodness then he will act based on mode of goodness he will do those sort of activities so it's our mind only which is the root cause of all our problems and the purpose of all our activities all dana all yama niyama all any religiosity doing the study of the scriptures the purpose of everything is to control that mind to pacify that mind and connect that mind with the supreme lord if somebody after doing all this dana tapa japa swadhyaya with all those activities if somebody is able to pacify his mind then he has got the result of all those activities but if after doing all these activities if somebody is doing charity somebody is doing some study of scripture somebody is doing lot of uh, social work also etc etc after doing all those activities also if somebody is not controlling his mind he is not pacifying his mind then he has not got the result of any of these activities in one sense it's all useless then then what is the use of doing all these extra show extra external show when somebody is not even trying to control or pacify their own mind people in the world they try to win over their external enemies but real enemy is our mind better you first win over your own mind rather than trying to win over others so mind is the real enemy and mind need to be controlled and how to control the mind that's why krishna spoke this whole sixth chapter of bhagavad gita the purpose is to control the mind the whole spiritual practice is to control the mind the chanting is to control our mind mantra mantra means manah trayate iti mantra one can the one which can deliver the mind that is mantra so the purpose of chanting what we do as our daily practice is to control our mind pacify our mind purify our mind and connect it with the supreme lord so mind is the root cause of problem chanchalam hi manah krishna pramathi balvata dhradam 
तस्याहम निग्रहम मन्ने वायुरेव सुदुष्करम अर्जुन आल्सो सेड दिस थिंग टू कृष्णा माय माइंड इज वेरी टर्बुलेंट चंचलम ही मनः कृष्णा पर माथी इट्स वेरी टर्बुलेंट एंड इट्स मैड इट्स वेरी स्ट्रांग बलवत दृढ़म इट्स ऑब्स्टिनेट वन थॉट एंटर्स द माइंड वन डिजायर एंटर्स द माइंड एंड इट डजंट गो क्विकली right keep thinking about that it keep thinking about that problem also and it's very flickering in nature it doesn't stay at one place goes here and there you are sitting in class at the end of class really reflect on that how much you remember maybe 10% if you remember 10% congratulations <laughs> so our mind is very turbulent and in niti shastra mind is compared with the monkey i gave that example few weeks back in sunday temple class also mind is compared with the monkey it says markatasya surapanam madhye vrishik danshanam tat madhye bhut sanchara yatva tatva bhavishyati if there is a monkey if that monkey is intoxicated okay you intoxicate that monkey after that if a scorpio comes and bite that monkey what will be the situation of that monkey monkey in journal is very restless doesn't stay on one branch keep jumping from one branch to another but if it is intoxicated it's even more turbulent it's even more flickering then if a scorpio come and bite that monkey then oh it's jumping up and down left and right anything and on top of that if that monkey is possessed by a ghost then what will happen to that monkey ghost <laughs> yatva tatva bhavishyati nobody knows what that monkey will do <laughs> our mind is compared to that monkey our monkey in journal is restless then we have intoxicated that monkey with all sort of desires and then the monkey that monkey mind is bitten by a scorpio that scorpio is the scorpio of envy we have so many desires in intoxicated with so many desires then bitten by the scorpio of envy towards others why that person has more than me why that person is getting more respect than me and then on top of that it is possessed by a ghost what is that all the anarthas in our heart काम क्रोध लोभ इल्यूजन वट इज द स्टेट ऑफ दैट दैट माइंड मंकी लाइक माइंड सो वी नीड टू प्योरीफाई दैट माइंड एंड हाउ वी कैन प्योरीफाई दैट माइंड इफ यू हैव टू प्योरीफाई यूर बॉडी यू गो इन बाथरूम टेक टेन मिनट बाथ राइट रब यूर बॉडी विथ सोप एंड ऑल विथ शावर विथ वॉटर एंड ऑल यू क्लीन यूर बॉडी बट ऑन द माइंड the dust accumulated on the mind is like 25000 miles worth of layer see if there is a even 0.1 mm layer of dust on your body you can remove that in 15 20 minute by taking nice shower so it's not like that on mind the dust accumulated on mind is mind is compared like 25000 miles worth of thick layer on our mind on our consciousness after so many of lifetimes being engaged in so many of materialistic activities that is the conditioning which is accumulated on our mind so we need to slowly slowly scrub out that remove that conditioning don't causing thinking others to be the cause of our misery thinking mind is the cause of my misery don't blaming others to be the root cause of our problem mind is the root cause of my problem so that was the reflection of this avanti brahmana and in that way he was able to tolerate all the situations all the harsh word of others also and all the physical abuses of others also <clears throat> so we need to develop a tinge of that tolerance thinking who is the root cause of our problem it's all our previous activity which are bringing us into that situation and ultimately it's the mind which is causing problem so devatas are not the cause of problem mind is the cause of problem just thinking about that tornado now <laughs>
ओके सो थैंक यू वेरी मच ग्रंथरा श्रीमद भागवतम की जय श्रील प्रभुपाद की जय अनंत कोटि वैष्णव वृंद की जय If anybody has any quick question, it's already two fifteen. If anybody has any quick question, so take the extract the take home message. You may not remember everything. Extract the take home message. What is the take home message from this? What was the earlier part of a Vanti Brahmana's life? What kind of activity he was doing? And because of those activity, what happened to him? how we need to dovetail our life how we need to utilize our earnings our time in what way so that we don't have to get into that situation to come to this realization and after he was into problem what was his mindset what kind of realization he got right so that is more important to reflect on okay so thank you any quick question खतवांग महाराज पास टाइम इज मेन्शन वेरी ब्रीफली इन भागवतम इट मेन्शन अबाउट दैट स्टोरी इन वन प्लेस दैट यस ही अटेन्ड परफेक्शन इन अ मुहूर्त इन वन मुहूर्त दैट्स इज इफ समी आज हाउ लॉन्ग इट विल टेक मी टू बिकम कृष्ण कॉन्शियस ओके हाउ सून आई कैन बिकम कृष्ण कॉन्शियस Prabhupada said, "One moment. It take one moment to become Krishna conscious. It's your level of surrender. When you decide, yes, I want to become Krishna conscious. In one moment, you can become Krishna conscious. We can dust off everything and just walk out of the room and continue with our lives. That is one option. That okay, we heard from one year goes out of other year. That's all, and we can just continue." same way our lives other thing is you hear from the ear goes down in your heart you want to reflect on that and see what i want to do now onwards how i can improve my life how i can fulfill the ultimate goal of my life otherwise excuses will be there there is excuse of no time there is excuse of too many kids activity there is excuse of oh, i already know it there is excuse of there are so many other problems let first other problems settle down there is excuse of my mind is troubling me so much all sort of excuses will be there the thing is do we want to live with excuses or we want to come to a situation where we can improve our life situation so it takes a moment to become krishna conscious katwang maharaj had one moment parikshit maharaj had seven days right when parikshit maharaj said i have only 7 days please tell me what to do shukdev goswami appeared there and he said you have 7 days that's more than enough khatwang maharaj got in one moment in one mahurat you have 7 days no worry so moment by moment we can also progress in spiritual life anything else ओके थैंक यू वेरी मच श्री प्रभुपाद की जय